Previously, light passed from air to glass. Some was reflected. Not all of the light made it through. An electrical signal passed from one electronic component to another. Some was reflected. Not all of the signal made it through. This time, a signal will pass from product owner to lead developer. How much will be reflected and how much will make it through? Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to Development That Pays. And welcome back to the second part of our investigation into step changes and boundaries. All of this talk of light passing through glass and signals passing through electronic components was all about making two basic points. The first is that step changes, boundaries, discontinuities, call them what you will, are everywhere. They're everywhere in nature, so we shouldn't be surprised to find them alive and well in our teams. The second point is that wherever there is a step change, you can expect reflections. You can expect that not all of the signal will get through. You can expect issues. Let's bring these guys back. Now, rather than talking generalities, I want to talk in specifics, the specifics of the team I had in mind when I first drew this sketch. Let's start with the developers. These two got on reasonably well, not much of a step change between them. These two had a slightly tougher time getting along. I'll indicate that with a bigger version of the sign. And these two, well, not great, but not bad either. The other relationships between the developers were much the same. On to the lead developer. Now, this guy had many superpowers, but perhaps the most impressive was his ability to get on well with pretty well every member of his team. The discontinuities here were all small. The business owner and the lead developer, well, it's fair to say that they had their moments. Nothing too terrible or dramatic, but enough to merit a sign of about this size. The business owner and the product owner had worked with each other for a very long time. So they had a very good working relationship. We'll give them a very small discontinuity sign. You'll have noticed, I'm sure, that I've left this relationship, the one between the product owner and the lead developer, until last. You'd be shocked to know that it was not good. Really not good. This picture shocked me a little bit. I'd gone looking for problems here, and I'd found them over here. Not at all what I'd expected. And maybe I'd discovered something slightly profound. But the cynical side of my brain wouldn't let me celebrate. It popped up with the so what question. Do the discontinuities between these people actually matter? Are they a big deal? Well, I think a partial answer to that is that maybe some of the relationships matter more than others. So let's talk about importance. How important is it that pairs of people get along? Starting again with the developers. Well, it's great if they get along, and it's absolutely crucial that they get along if they're, for example, pair programming. But in general, I'm going to say that it's of medium importance that they get along well. I'll indicate that with the smallest symbol. Next up, the relationship between the lead developer and the individual developers. For my money, these relationships are a good bit more important, and I'll indicate that with a slightly larger sign. Which brings us on to the relationships between these three players. In my opinion, the relationship between the product owner and the lead developer really is the big one. The communication here must be of high quality with a minimum of reflection. Not just from the product owner to the lead developer, but also from the lead developer back to the product owner. Let's finish things off with the relationship between the business owner and the product owner and the lead developer respectively. I found this trickier to pin down. And then I remembered several occasions where the product owner and the lead developer were trying to do a better job of working together, only to be undermined by the business owner at every turn. So for this reason, I'm going to assign a fairly high importance to these relationships. I've run a little bit longer than I planned to do. So let's pause there. Next time I'll come back do a little more analysis, and then move on to the all-important part, the solutions. Look forward to talking to you then. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. There's a new episode of Development That Pays each and every Wednesday. By far the easiest way to get it is to subscribe to this channel. Hit the big red button, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Cheers for now.